Good morning to all of you that are online with us watching our service today, becoming a part of it in that way. I wanted to make uh, one announcement, and that is we are beginning again our Bible study. That happens on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Uh, it's turned out to be not just a time of reading the Bible together and talking about it, but a time of fellowship for all who come, a time of encouragement. So if you'd like to be a part of that, just email myself or email the uh, church office, and we'd be glad to get you on that Zoom invitation so you can be a part of that study. Here now our call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. For this is the day that the Lord Jesus made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving, singing joyful songs of praise. Our hymn is number 411, Arise, Your Light is Come. Arise, your light is come, the spirits fall away. Show forth the glory of your God, which shines on you. you at this time to be a part of our prayer of confession. Bring those things to the Lord that you felt, you feel that you've uh, run short in and not able to do what God wants you to do. Those sins of omission and commission, uh, God invites us to seek his forgiveness, first silently and then together. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, and in forgetting your love. Brothers and sisters, I have the great pleasure to say to you that in Jesus Christ your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
watches over us. He does not slumber or sleep. He shall preserve us from all evil, from this time forth and woman and her husband went to a dentist while they were overseas and apparently uh, the woman said uh, I'm anxious to get back with the tour I want you to take this tooth out right away no Novocaine no help just let's let's get the tooth out right away and the dentist said well okay if that's the way you want to do it would you please let me know which tooth it is and she turned to her husband and said would you show him where your tooth is that needs to come Yes, uh, we are better sometimes at showing other people's faults than being honest about our own. Let's hear now what the scriptures have to say. I wanted to mention that this is the uh, part of the Song of Ascents. And what the, what the scholars tell us is that these were songs that were sung as people journeyed from their towns and homes up to Jerusalem in the many festival times that people had in those days. And others have said that it's a celebration of the exile. When people came back from the exile, they sang songs of God's greatness and goodness. So this is the song of ascent. This is 121. Hear now God's word. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved he who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. From this time on, and forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This comes from the Book of Ascents, the Songs of Ascents. It's sort of the dog-eared hymn book that everybody sang, and so it reflects a lot of the experience of people on a pilgrim journey. For us, we are on that kind of pilgrim journey, and brothers and sisters, we thought that if we were Christians, we would be protected from difficulties. We thought that if you are a Christian, then you don't have to worry about things. You can go on and live your life in confidence. But the truth is, before and now, post this uh, pandemic we've experienced, is that's been knocked off its feet. We cannot say that it's because we are sinners that this has come upon us because then everyone would be on that same level, which we are. We're all sinners, that's for sure. But the fact that we thought before, if we were good enough, God would not allow us to be sick or to have problems. That's been knocked off its feet by what's happened to us. The truth is, all of us 
will be looking around for help. The question is, where will we look for this help? Where will we go for it? Um, will we go for it by looking up on the hills? In one sense, that looking up on the hills means, does mean exactly that. We are looking somewhere else for help. We know that this difficulty we're going through is too big for us, too hard. But also, the other part of this is that in that time, in the time of the exile, many pagans had moved into Israel, and so on every hillside, every hilltop, they had a habit of building a pagan temple. There was one to the sun and one to the moon and one to water, and there were many temples on the hillsides. And so the, the psalmist here is wondering, do I look up to the hills and do I go to one of these pagan folks to get help? Patent, um, patent medicines, um, nostrums, uh, little, little things that people could do, um, ways to and, and wake up uh, Baal, to wake up uh, all these false gods. You remember the episode with Elijah when he, had to, when he was uh, mocking the, the followers of Baal and saying, where is he? You better go wake him up. And so what happens on those hillsides was that these priests would do things because uh, Baal needed to be awoken up, and so when he did that, he would be able to help people. But the truth is, these were, uh, these were not any help. They were not help to people. They were, they were really causing them to be caught up in superstition. And in those sort of things, they could get lost. And so, brothers and sisters, I say to you that we want to look to the hills, but we don't want to use those things that are copycats or that are false or that or one, two, three steps. We don't want to go the easy way as we look up there and see what could be done. We want to be a part of something greater than ourselves that we can count on in this world and during this time. The scripture here tells us that, that this God that we have uh, is the creator of the world. He made everything, and so we can put our trust in him. But it says a lot of other things. It says that he's awake. We don't have to wake him up. He's always awake to what's going with us. He's our guardian even in the midst of things, and he will not need to be awoken because he loves and cares for us. It says that God is not distant a long way away, that we have to pull God towards ourselves. No, God is nearby. He is not a long way away from us, even in the midst of the troubles that we're going through. And we can be, he's at we are at his right hand. That means we are nearby to him and know that we've not been left alone in the midst of our struggles. It says that he will keep us from stumbling in the dark. When travelers are on a trip, there's uh, three things that can cause them to lose their way, to have more problems on the trip. One of them is to stumble. That means not to see the barriers and the things in front of them and so to trip over them and fall. And if you're going through hill country, that's a scary thing, a dangerous thing. You want a God who can keep you from stumbling. You also want a God who can protect you from sunstroke during the day. Sunstroke uh, is, is where you get so hot that you're, in, you know, you're incapacitated by it. You, you almost get a fever. You, you are burned up. And this, this, I think, signifies to us all the effort we take in life that we need not do. It's that, that work that causes us to lose our way with God. And we, we work hard at things to try and please him, but we don't have to please him. He already cares about us. He's already nearby. He's already helping us get through the stumbles of life, helping us to overcome this, the sunstroke of life. But then it also says that God can protect us from the moonstroke. moonstroke. Now that's the sort of thing we don't really talk about. But to find a clue to that, you might think about the word luna, sea. Moon is the word, the word for the moon is luna. And so people who are moonstruck. This means people that are struggling with their mental health because of what's going on. They're having trouble clearly working through things. They are, they are sad. They are lost. They are a way away. And, and they need someone to protect them, not just for things in the daytime, the sunstroke that, that comes from effort and heat but the moonstroke that comes at night that causes us to have 
the deep doubts and depression and difficulties. And it says that he can protect us from this lunacy, this, this mental illness that we go through. And I think one of the more interesting things about this, I think, is all in all is that evil can't get between us and the love of God. You might remember Romans 8 where it says nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that's also in this passage you can tell that nothing can separate us from God's love. You know, we might think that we can do certain things and God will never forgive us. We might think that we, we've done so many times that he's kind of given up. Or we might think that God doesn't really care about us and so it doesn't matter what we do. But in all of these things, God is right there with us. There is nothing from uh, inside, outside of us, inside of us, that can destroy God's love for us. And it's sort of like a, a boat will never sink as long as the water doesn't get in. There has to be a way for the water to get in for a ship to, to, to go down. And so it is that with life, there has to be something, some way for the water to get in for us to, to, to struggle as we do. But the truth is, uh, if we are trusting God and putting our trust in God, there is no way that this water can get in, this, this problems that we have that cause us uh, so much struggle. Um, I love the fact that nothing can separate us from God, not the virus, not the sadness and loneliness that we feel, uh, not circumstances, not minor car wrecks. Nothing can separate us from the love of God uh, because we belong to him and he is nearby. We need not fear anything. It's sort of like they used to make these things that are, would go deep down under the water. And they would make really thick walls on these. They were called bath escapes or, uh, or whatever. They were, they were these things that, that were like the, they had such thick walls that the pressure from the outside couldn't get in to crush what's inside. And they found out after a while that the water on the inside, could, the, the atmosphere on the inside could be increased, and so they could even go deeper. And so I think that's what it's being talked about, is that if we are strong on the inside, if our walls are thick, or if we've, we've got Christ there, we've got his love there, then no matter how difficult times come to try and crush us, we can, we can resist that because we have the love of God within us. So God's not sleeping, God's nearby, he's able to keep us from stumbling, he's able to help us with our sunstroke and our moonstroke, and the evil can't get between us and God. And finally, it ends up by saying this is not just for now, but forever, that God will never leave us, either in this world or the next, and so we don't have to worry, uh, we don't have to, to be so concerned about what's happening out there knowing that God will never leave us in here. So we take great comfort from that. We're not like the pagans who have no place else to go, but try to manipulate God and try to move God by different things that they do, when in fact God loves them just as they are and will never let them go. And yet we keep on trying to make God do what we want God to do, thinking that we have to earn his favor. Uh, Eugene Peterson tells a story that I actually found out myself on my own. He was working on his lawnmower one day, and uh, no matter what he could do, he couldn't get that righty-tighty thing to work. Um, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey is what I was always taught. And so he was, he was putting his wrench on that, trying to, to take off his lawnmower, um, you know, his blade. He wanted to sharpen it. And so he put his best wrench on it, and he couldn't turn it. And then he got a pipe and put a pipe on the wrench and tried to turn it that way. Finally, he was hitting the, uh, the lawnmower blade uh, bolt with a rock, um, using the pipe and everything else. He was banging away at it. And so his, uh, his neighbor just happened to notice, and he came over, and he said, you know, I had a lawnmower just like that. And he said it was interesting because the th threads on the on the uh, bolt that goes on the, the mower blade are actually in reverse. And so sure enough, he took the wrench and he put it on the, put it on the lawnmower blade and it turned easily. Brothers and sisters, why do we keep trying to make sense of life uh, that doesn't work? Why do we keep trying to turn the threads the wrong way? Brothers and sisters, we need to listen to what God is saying about life. 
that if we can put our trust in God, we need not worry so much about the journey that we're on. For nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is a uh, folk melody from Ghana. It's actually a folk hymn. And it was arranged by Jane Marshall, a Methodist composer. And the text is a translation from the Ghanaian language. It was translated by a fellow named Tom Colvin. It's called Yesu, Yesu, Fill Us With Your Love. <laughs> Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are near and far away. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we serve. These are the ones we should love. All our neighbors to us and you. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Loving puts us on our knees, serving as though we are slaves. This is the way we should live with you. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we should live with you. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Join me for our affirmation of faith. It's the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, won't you join me in a prayer? O oh Lord, our hearts continue to break 
over the plague that's on this land. And so we pray, Lord, that you would soon begin to heal our land and to heal the people, preserve people from the death and the difficulty of this time. Lord, be with our leaders as they try to figure out how to help this to happen. And be with us, Lord, as we might take the values that, the values that have been challenged during this time and put them aside, and the values of loving and caring for others, that they might come to the fore Give us creative ways that we can help people in need. And Lord, help us not to let anyone be left out from the fact that you love us right where we are and will always do so. No matter what we're going through, no matter what losses we've had, we know that you never, ever give up on us and you never leave us. You are close by, you are at hand, and you love and care for us. And so, Lord, we thank you so much for the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is a great privilege that we have to give to the church's work. And the money that you give not only supports the things that we are doing now, right here, but supports the things that the church is doing across the world. And so we ask that you would be generous in your giving, knowing that God can do great things with what you give. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that we have things that we can give back to you, that we have blessings that we don't even expect that we can honor you with. Help us, Lord, to give enough so it hurts, Lord, and enough so that we experience the hilarious joy of giving. And Lord, also, we ask that you take what we do give and multiply it and that your kingdom might be built from it. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn is number 333, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Brothers and sisters, as you leave this service, we ask that you remember that God is nearby and that God loves you and cares about you. Seek no false gods. Seek the God who is there for you. And as you go, may the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.